Good evening. Welcome to the City Council for May 28th, 2019. The time is 7.30. Would everybody please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag Roll call, please. Cannon. Here. Bud Mads. Present. O'Brien. Here. Bassessi. Here. Diastas. Present. Sanoika. Here. With six here and nobody absent, this is a quorum. Uh, just a quick reminder that this meeting is being recorded and all future broadcasts will be up on the city's cable broadcast channel and multiple media outlets for future review. Um, first, first thing we'll do here is uh, approve the city council meeting minutes from May 14th, 2019. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, and seconded by Alderman Budnats. Is there anything to identify within those minutes? Any corrections, additions, or deletions? Seeing none, then uh, the question is, shall those minutes be approved? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? With the ayes in favor, the outcome is that the <laughs> minutes are approved. Looks like the next portion is going to be to deviate. And with that, I would like to have uh, a motion to deviate for a couple items that we have here. So moved. Thank you, Alderman Budmetz. Thank you, Alderman Sessi. Yeah. Um, what I want to do is go ahead and start first by recognizing. Um, yep. There we go, we got a voice. By recognizing uh, an individual within the community. His name is Vinny Sluga. Um, he went ahead after the election, and Vinny, why don't you come on up? And he's been involved with the Rolling Meadows Library, he's been involved with the Rolling Meadows Garden Club, and he so graciously and generously asked if he could be my bodyguard and be security for me. <laughs> and so I, I thought that that was a wonderful gesture, and I do appreciate your security, and I appreciate your vigilance to the community. Um, I did have to share that with the chief, and the chief said, well, you know what, I would like that to be my job as chief to uh, secure the mayor. But with that, we still wanted to offer you this little token of our appreciation, and it's a certificate with a nice little letter. If you want to open it, inside there is a badge from the Rolling Meadows Police Department, and the badge being a, a patch for your sleeve, not a badge like an official's. Okay. <laughs> and then we also got you this certificate and commendation. And Vinny, if you want to hold this up for everybody to see, why don't we go ahead and show that? And with that, I'd like for everyone to give Vinny a round of applause for his continued excellence. And then the other two items on there are um, the chief for the life safety. Thank you. Um, chief, if I could have you come up here. And why don't you go ahead and give the background on this. Very well. So uh, last month we were able to uh, secure 10 new uh, AEDs in the city. And in fact, just a few days later, I got a uh, notice from our CPR coordinator, firefighter and paramedic Steve Zurich that he was contacted by one of our uh, trainees that Steve had trained earlier in the year and uh, reached out to Steve and had a valid save. And so I thought that was quite remarkable that um, in the city of Rolling Meadows, through the uh, efforts of firefighter Steve Zirk and his team, we've educated or we have trained over 800 people in the last three years in CPR. I'd like to first bring up Steve Zirk. He's our CPR coordinator. <clears throat> And so, uh, with that being said, um, I, I want to share with you a little event that happened back on April 9th. Um, Michael Branson and Dan Bakaroff were working at uh, their positions at the Wellness Center at Northwest Community in the first floor, which is the workout area, and they're both personal trainers, I believe, and heard a code blue on the uh, second floor, which is the cardiac rehab uh, facility. Uh, they usually kind of figure out, hey, that, they got that covered upstairs. They both uh, ran, scampered upstairs, and saw someone performing CPR on a patient that was pulseless and, and breathless, and <coughs> began CPR. One of them raced to get the on-site AED, continued CPR, put the AED on, and got successful conversion, 
and a positive outcome for the victim. So come on up here. I'm going to have you Mike Franson and David Bakawa. Um, I, I just want to share another, just all get together. I want to thank you first. Thank you. So this shows our, our success of uh, citizen education and how uh, CPR works, AEDs work, and involvement is what it's all about, uh, acting when uh, appropriate, and that's uh, quite remarkable. I also want to share uh, the note that the survivor sent to um, both Mike and Dan. It's real quick, but it says, uh, Dear Northwest Community Angel Team, it is impossible for me to find words to thank each and every one of you for what you did for me. I truly realize how blessed I was to be at the right place at the right time, with the most amazing people around during the most difficult moment of my life. And I truly believe that if I were anywhere else, the outcome would have been completely different and not in a good way. One of the hardest things for me to grasp is the memories of that day. I don't remember falling, and then next memory I was, I was waking up to the paramedics, and unfortunately I don't remember when the team took over and all the steps they took, but I do know that due to their professionalism and AED and CPR training, they performed a miracle, and I will always be grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. If you want to take a break, we can go ahead and set up some time for photo ops with your family if you like. Go ahead, I think. What is it? Sorry. I'll set back up. So with that, then we'll go ahead and move on to the next point, which is Mayor's report. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I get a motion to close the floor? Apologize. Thank you, Alderman Cannon. Second. Yes, sir. All right. So with that, moving back on for mayor's report, I wanted to just congratulate everybody who participated in the parade. Um, it was a phenomenal turnout, even though the weather didn't cooperate at the end. But uh, attendance was good, both by those participating in the parade and those who were spectating and watching the parade. There were, unfortunately, some ceremonious parts that got missed as a result of the weather. But I do know that those portions will be included in the next year's ceremony, so, so that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, with that, are there any ward reports? Mr. Mayor, I have a ward report. Yes. Um, a resident of the 7th Ward contact me, contacted me to express concerns that the natural gas tax does not provide tiered discounts for senior citizens. The resident also stated that the increased use in residential natural gas does not correlate with increased road usage in the same way buying additional vehicle stickers for additional cars might. The resident strongly felt that tax revenues for road repair should be funded by vehicle owners or purchases relating more directly to roads. I provided the resident with contact information for uh, Commissioner Scott Bruton of Cook County in the 14th District uh, and a general phone number for him to contact uh, Cook County for utility financial assistance. I also explained that the natural gas tax is considered a more equitable tax on the whole because businesses, churches, and other entities uh, that would not have paid vehicle stickers but would use our roads are paying their fair share. And furthermore, comparisons between revenues under the natural gas tax and the vehicle sticker program are unavailable at this time, given that the natural gas tax was implemented in December of 2018. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, and thanks for elaborating to that individual <coughs> some further detail. Any other ward reports? 
Uh, just a quick one, Mr. Mayor, from Ward 3. Um, I know Chief isn't here tonight. Uh, he's got a, uh, another great gentleman here. Uh, resident contacted me in the third ward regarding Campbell and Cardinal, an intersection where there was a lot of high traffic volume, speeding, no observance of the stop sign. Talked to Chief right away. I think he had a commander out at the house the next day. The resident reached back out to me and just wanted to share his thanks for the quick response to the city. There is uh, now more traffic here he's seen there because he knows the resources um, that the police department's working on, but he did want to share his thanks to the police department for the quick response and placing a, a, a car there throughout the day to, to keep an eye on that. Unfortunately, we know creatures are a habit. As soon as they're gone, the next guy will probably roll through the stop sign, but uh, we did have a nice conversation with the resident, which he understood. So I sure. wanted to pass on their, their thanks. Keeping it up. Good. Thank you. Uh, Alderman by Metz. Hi. Um, resident of my ward um, contacted me. That she had a problem <clears throat> where apparently the flood recycling truck had ripped the electric wire going to her house off. And Public Works, um, Fred and Rob, um, worked together to um, get a hold of the people at Flood Brothers and have them try to work this out with her. So thank you to Public Works for working that out with this resident. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, then we'll move on to the next section, which is opening the floor to the public for the next 20 minutes. With that, it does appear as though we do have an individual on the sign-on sheet. So I'm going to read the obligatory um, information here, which is in order to secure the rights of citizens of the city and to fair and just representation before the elected officials and guarantee to the elected officials an order and dignified form in which to conduct city's business, no person shall be allowed to engage in any activity that will disturb, disrupt the orderly proceedings of the city council. Per rules of procedure, the public is to address the city council and the fact that no member of the city council responds does not mean that the city council or any member thereof disagrees, agrees with any comment. In order to attain this objective, the following rules of conduct are hereby established. They're also listed on the sign-in sheet when you sign in. Any person who seeks to address the City Council at this time for public comments shall be permitted to speak only upon recognition of the presiding officer, and such person shall adhere to the following provisions. Each person addressing the City Council shall state their name and their address for the record. Each person shall be granted no more than five minutes of the allotted 20 minutes in order to address the City Council. Questions and or commentary shall be limited to City business. Comments supporting or opposing a nominated person, candidacy, elective office of the City shall be out of order. Commentary shall be directed to the presiding officer unless presiding officer permits the individual to address council members or other city officers present. Discussion shall take place in a professional manner which displays mutual respect. Profanity shall not be used in any form or manner. With that, I see Annette S. If you could come up and just state your first name and your street name, you can leave your, your address off, the numbers off for PII, personally identifiable information. It's Annette Zafrin, and I just wanted to make a comment about, uh, before we came here, we were watching Channel 6 with all the news flashes of things going on in the city, and they had about our upcoming block party, which is going to be at Rolling Meadows uh, High School parking lot. However, on the sign on TV, it just says, new location, new location, Central Road. Why don't you put on there that it's Rolling Meadows High School? There's other buildings and parking lots and facilities along Central Road. It's not very definitive of where this nice activity is going to be happening. So I think whoever designs the signs for Channel 6, our municipal channel, has to go through them and read them as if you didn't know what was happening so that it's more definitive. And secondly, we are announcing, on again, on Channel 6, our municipal channel, about our 4th of July, but we should put a shout-out that we are having applications for our parade marshals, our uh, youngsters of Rolling Meadows that would like to be in the parade, um, they can go online and get an application and all the details for that upcoming event. So I would hope that people that are watching this tonight that have children in Rolling Meadows that would like to be a parade marshal this year, 
that they go on and get their applications in because the deadline is fast approaching and we would like to have our horse-drawn wagon full of Rolling Meadows uh, parade marshals. So we just have to make sure we get more information out there for our public. So if our signage could be a little bit better and more informative, more definitive, I think that would be helpful to our residents. Thank you. Seeing that there aren't any others on the sign-in sheet, we'll move on to the pending ordinances in for second reading. First one being resolution number 19R-51, which is to approve, an to approve and accept a municipal sign easement for a proposal for a proposed community event sign at 2550 Quinton Road with NSMJW, JAWA property. It was tabled on March 26, 2019 council meeting and postponed <coughs> on the 42319 city council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, motion for discussion? Yeah, yes. You have to accept, the, you have to make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion. Is there a motion to discuss? Motion to approve. To approve. That's, isn't there a motion to approve? That's why I said a description and a motion to approve. I apologize. I need a second. Second then. Can we, do, can we discuss second. for second. a second then? Okay. Okay. Discussion. No problem. Is there a discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a question for staff. Uh, as written, the easement can only be used for a sign or marker, and given the strong residential uh, resident opposition to a marker of any kind at the site for reasons of safety, function, and effectiveness, um, I will be voting no on this resolution and supporting alternative communication methods. Um, however, Mr. Horn, at the com uh, Committee of the Whole meeting, you had mentioned or suggested approving the easement in the event we decided to use the space for something else, such as a park bench. Um, upon further follow-up, I wanted to confirm that those types of options are, are possible under the language of this particular resolution. Um, as it's currently written, they are not. You are correct. Um, per our previous discussion, um, the language would have to be changed in regard to the specific um, explanation for the easement uh, as it's currently written. Um, my other question then to staff is if, uh, if we were to pursue a bike path along that area, would we still need to do the required paperwork necessary for an easement in that same spot for the bike path? The bike path is actually adjacent okay. to the easement. The easement is actually east of where the bike path is located, okay. which we have currently submitted um, per city council direction. We actually just received uh, the phase one report um, that is being submitted as part of that grant project. So to clarify then, no additional paperwork for easements of that property would be necessary for that project? Not related to this section of land that you're considering right now. And what options would be available to support that project using this easement if we weren't to use a marker or a sign? I don't understand the question. If you could repeat, of what? course. Um, what uh, what could we be? What suggestions does staff have for that particular s section, that easement? If we were to approve the easement for something other than a marker or a sign, again, the the first item was a resting area, okay. uh, since it was adjacent to the bike path. And another alternative would potentially be like a um, like a drinking fountain. Um, because it's uh, that bike path will connect a, a pretty significant um, user area uh, if it is constructed. So those were the two ideas that came to thought uh, at the committee of the whole meeting and since then. Thank you. Sure. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, just one question for staff in there. Um, I know it says about making sure we have a million-dollar policy, uh, like an insurance policy. That would automatically be covered by the general insurance policy of the city, correct? It's not an additional cost. It's just part of our umbrella policy. Oh, part of our umbrella. Okay, that's why I just wanted to double-check. I saw it called out saying a million dollars, but I assumed it was the normal policy. That's all. Alder Mendez. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, um, I guess the question goes to, to um, the city attorney. Do we need to amend uh, this, um, this ordinance to include 
the possibility of a park bench or water fountain in order to accept it? Well, the underlying document itself would have to be amended to reflect that particular type of use, which it currently does not. Okay. If, if in fact, the grantor, Jawa, um, provides us that uh, type of flexibility, the document could be revised accordingly, and it could come back for approval. I don't want to speak, I mean... I, okay, so we Jawa. can't just amend it right now to include that and pass it this week, so... Uh, I guess the best procedure for us to do is to um, make a motion to postpone uh, or to table and then allow staff to go back to Java and see if they would approve that and then have it come back because right now um, we don't have that option, so it doesn't make sense to um, to pass it without having those options as discussed at the, the community the whole meeting. Well, we could we could pass it. I, I prefer postponing it, really, um, as opposed to to laying it on the table. I, th I think the I think protocol would dictate that we go back to Java and say we we would like to have these additional uses added to it and see what they come back with, rather than us saying we'll accept it and going back to Java. I, to say protocol, I think dictates that we go back to them and they agree to do it and then come back to us. Okay. Manager Grimstock. Thank you, Mayor Gallo. Um, Alderman D asked us if it is postponed, it would have to be postponed for um, numerous meetings because they only meet quarterly to revise their ordinance. Um, so, again, that goes back into we can get a verbal pretty quickly, but at the same point in time, we would not have a revised ordinance from JAWA um, to revise 1902 that was passed. Well, then I think the thing to do would be laid on the table. Okay. I'm just telling you how it is. So, are we going to look for a motion to table this? Is that we can make a motion? Somebody, could, one of the aldermen, can make a motion to table. It'll be seconded. It's non debatable. Let's see where it goes. All right. So moved. Then we could we put this on the table? Seconded. Okay. With uh, that, then I guess the, the direction becomes uh, for councilmen to vote on whether or not we we, we table this. So, if we could can call we, roll. Can we discuss still yet? Well, yeah. You know, actually. Okay. It's not debatable. Table, motion to table is not debatable. Okay. I stand corrected. <clears throat> so with that, could the uh, clerk please call the roll? Vicente. Yes. Diestas. Yes. Sinoika. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Matz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, then this does get tabled. <coughs> May I ask a question? Sure. I'll make a statement. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to reassure people who are in my ward who are deathly afraid that we're trying to play some games here. We have no intention of approving a sign there. I'd like everybody to completely understand that. There's no side game going on here. I think I won't speak for staff. I think part of the reason is um, they've worked a lot of hours and time to try to get the easement, and I think they were just looking at an easy way to keep the easement for future possibilities. A sign will not be going on there. Thank you. Okay. Well, moving on from that one, we have ordinance number 19-32, and that's to authorize the disposal of surplus city property, vehicles, and equipment for second reading. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika, and seconded by Alderman O'Brien. Is there any discussion on this one? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Diaz says. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Metz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, this does move forward. Next up are the consent ordinances, and typically, seeing as how there's only one, and we would we would make a, a request here to go through them, um, you know, in a single motion, without debate. Does anybody have anything to discuss with this particular point? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Is there anything to discuss on this particular topic? Second. second. Do I, I? Sorry, I thought I saw a second over here. Was there a second? Bassesi. Yeah. I will. Thank you, Alderman Bassesi. <laughs> no one's quick to second anything. <laughs> Great. Um, so with that, would the clerk please call the roll? Sonica. Yes. Cannon. Yes. Bud Metz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Diestas. Yes. 
Six in favor and opposed? This moves on to second reading. Moving on to new business, we have the motion to approve the payment of bills on warrants. Is there a motion to approve the bills on warrant? So moved. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Alderman Budmatz. Is there any discussion on the item? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Cannon? Yes. Budmatz? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Bassesi? Yes. Diastas? Yes. Tonica? Yes. Well, with six in favor and opposed, then those bills are approved for payment. Moving on, we have consent resolutions. There are one, two, three, four, five consent resolutions. Does any alderman wish to pull any of these consent resolutions? Nope. Then, seeing it as the chair, in order to declare the resolutions in one motion without debate, can I have such a motion? Thank you, Alderman Budmatz. Thank you, Alderman Cannon. The question is, shall the resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Budmatz? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Bassesi? Yes. Diastas? Yes. Sonoika? Yes. Cannon? Yes. With six in favor and unopposed, please make it move forward. That moves us on to new business, and at this time the mayor does not have any appointments yet for mention, and no proclamations this year. Uh, city clerk report? None. Nothing to report there. Staff reports? Alderman Crum, or Manager Crumstock, excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gallo and the uh, City Council. I do have some add-ons um, from what's in the packet, but I do want to thank everybody who donate, donated on the 17th annual Dunkin' Donuts Cup on a Rooftop promotion that took place on Friday, May 17th at the Dunkin' Donuts located at 3350 Kirchhoff Road. $4,600 was raised, and um, we actually did a little bit better than our neighbors uh, we do greatly appreciate everybody um, who participates that. It does go to the Torch Fund for Special Olympics. Obviously, if you missed the Saturday, May 25th bike ride sponsored by the Environmental Committee, the next one is scheduled for Saturday, June 22nd, starting at 9 a.m. at the Community Church at 2720 Kirchhoff Road. I think that there were nine individuals who participated this time. Um, we also want to mention that if you missed the Saturday, May 25th Farmers and Food Truck event, the next one is scheduled for Saturday, June 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And again, we are at the Community Church at 2720 Kirchhoff Road. This Friday, Meadows Cruise Nights are back thanks to Meadows Christian Fellowship located at 2401 Kirchhoff Road. The cruisers will be around from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Fridays, obviously starting this Friday and going all the way through September 6th. Please join the Family Fun. It's at 2401 Kirchhoff Road. If you want additional information, please visit the website at www.meadowscruisenights.com. Obviously, the next one that I want to mention is um, Amish Farmers, located at 2122 Plum Grove Road, will open to the public on Friday, May 31st um, at 8 a.m. Um, there will be a ribbon cutting on Thursday, June 6th at 4.30 p.m., but again, for this opening on Friday, May 31st, they start, um, the store hours are 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. There will be all kinds of uh, sweets and drinks um, during the store hours. There will be a raffle. And then on Saturday, um, they're also going to be doing additional sweets and treats and as uh, other things go on. Um, there will also be a toy giveaway for youngsters between 7 p.m. and, I mean, excuse me, 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. And Sunday, June 2nd, they will also be doing um, opening items for 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And again, sweets and drinks. Um, and obviously, there's something called an egg giveaway between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And then obviously, I mentioned, um, if you would like any of the information, we do have that here too. Going back to the regular list, um, this Sunday, June 2nd, the annual Special Olympics Law Enforcement Torch Run will be conducted on Gulf Road. In the morning, we're usually uh, by 8.15 at the um, parking lot right outside of uh, Chipotle, and then obviously we transport people over to um, the atrium, and then by 8.30ish, depending on how long it takes Schomburg to run their leg, um, we have our leg that starts 8.30, 9 o'clock, depending again. It's not a true run where we have a rabbit go out and everybody runs after it. We try to keep everybody together. 
Um, if you want additional information, please contact Police Chief Nowacki at 847-255-24106. Um, unfortunately, it might be Deputy Chief Bill Aronson who would be taking those calls because uh, Chief is on vacation. Um, but we do want to also mention, as uh, was mentioned earlier in the night, June 7th is the fifth annual block party to be conducted on Central Road and the Rolling Meadows High School between 4.30 and 8.30 p.m. And obviously, we hope that people will join and visit um, please look for directional signs because we're trying to have more parking spots this year um, and some additional new items that we have. Then the next Friday after that, Friday, June 14th, is the first scheduled Friday Rock and Roll in the Meadows. Um, this event takes place at 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. in Kimball Hill Park. Music will be provided by the musical group Spoken For. Then June 17th, there's a flag retirement ceremony conducted by the Scouts or at Scout Troop 168, and this commences at 7 p.m. at the Kimball Hill Park Fire Bowl Pit. Anyone can bring a flag um, to be retired, or you can always drop them off here at City Hall. We make sure that they are um, given to the Boy Scouts to actually take care of. Obviously, it's been some time. We do want to mention, um, do you have a crime tip or information that may help the Rolling Meadows Police Department? Please contact the Rolling Meadows Crime Stoppers at one 847 590 7867. That's one eight four seven five nine zero. Stop. Obviously, it's the last uh, meeting of the month, and before I add two more parts in there, um, for June, the Economic Development Committee will be meeting on Tuesday, June fourth, at six p.m. right here in the council chambers. Tentative items to be discussed are the new business feedback and contact uh, distribution, business advocate update, the city website um, will be reviewed, items of interest in the city. Chamber of Commerce update and other items of interest. The Planning and Zoning Commission, due to a lack of items, will not be meeting in June. One item that I do want to add, which is not in the sheet and what Mayor Gallo did mention, is due to the weather shortened Memorial Day ceremony and the names of the Rolling Meadows veterans who passed away in 2018 that would have been read on Saturday will now be included next year's uh, event. And then we do want to mention that... Um, and this was not mentioned because we didn't do the full ceremony. Um, obviously, because it was shortened, we do want to mention to everybody, take an extra moment on June 6th this year because it is the 75th anniversary of um, D-Day. And we hope that if you see a veteran from World War II, you will reach out to them too and um, thank them for their service with all veterans that we appreciate. So with that, those are items of uh, interest for this meeting. Thank you. Any items or matters not on the agenda that wish to be discussed? Alderman Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to re reiterate for anybody in my ward who wasn't paying attention to the agenda, uh, item H tonight was um, to remove the sign on Quinton Road. This caused a lot of controversy. The sign is officially dead now, so there's no ambiguity about that. The sign will not be going in there. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention to people in my ward, there's going to be five streets in my ward that will be reconstructed this year. Prairie, Highland West of Quinton, Jessica Court, Kevin Lane, and Michael Court will all be redone. Public Works will be responding to all the people in those affected streets with information about how to park cars, comings and goings. We don't have an exact start date, but I'm trying to give people a warning ahead of time. Public Works will have an information meeting probably here in this room so people will know because it is a dif difficult situation when their street's getting reconstructed. But uh, they'll take good care of all of us. Thank you. Alderman Diaz. Thank you. Um, past procedure has been for the mayor to announce that resumes were being accepted um, for interested individuals to be interviewed for the open fourth ward alderman position. Mm -hmm. I had a, a resident from the fourth ward contact me and asked if you are currently accepting resumes for the open position uh, to be interviewed. I am, and I have already collected more than five resumes, and we'll put it out again that they are being open for uh, review and submitted to my email address. Okay, thank you. Can I just take a, one quick moment and um, obviously just go back one thing. We did have three new businesses that opened in April, and two of them I do want to highlight. One was School Health at 5600 Apollo Drive, 
and Daisy's Cafe at 3334 Kirchhoff Road. Thank you. Any other matters not on the agenda? Well, then with that, I think we can uh, put it out there for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Alderman Cannon, second. Second. Alderman O'Brien. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nobody? Meeting adjourned.